Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and this is 10 Insanely Dark and Mature Men in Black Cartoon Episodes Explored. Men in Black, the animated series, was created as a cash grab in 1997 after the monumental success of the original film starring Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. The series made a few changes in its design and setup, but remained largely true to the film and grounded in the comics. However, the most important aspect of the cartoon series is the fact that it had a plethora of episodes that dealt with several contemporary issues, like oil crises, war, discrimination against the weaker sections of society, etc. Furthermore, more, it packed several other themes, like that of the troubled relationship between parents and their children, between friends, colleagues, or issues like betrayal and trust. So naturally, the Men in Black animated series had something for everyone and was suited for audiences from all age groups. Given the gravity and depth that this show held, we thought it would be great to explore 10 of the darkest and most mature episodes from the cartoon and dive deep into their stories. So. Are you ready to take a trip with these evil monsters from the deepest corners of the universe? Before we get into today's explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, let's begin. Uh, you, you guys must have me confused with someone else. See, my, my name is... Number 1. The Long Goodbye Syndrome Season 1, Episode 1 As a group of firefighters were trying to bring a poor kitty stuck in a tree back on the ground, K and J arrived at the spot, posing as fire marshals. Their presence clearly suggested that something otherworldly was in the vicinity. Jay climbed up the tree, assuming that the cat was the alien. Kay did try to warn him, but Jay, being himself, didn't pay much heed to the warning. To Jay's horror, a tree branch became sentient and manhandled him as if he were a rag doll in an angry kid's hand. Jay learned the hard way that the tree itself was non-departmental issued concealment being used by an undocumented alien. As the beast tried to flee from the spot, Kay shot a supercharged sphere, flying at the alien and stopping it. Kay neuralized the firefighters at the scene. With a roll newspaper and a short leash, Stop, you killing me. And soon, the men in black learned that there was a possibility of a Skraldian population explosion in the sewers. Now, Skraldians are aliens from the planet Skrall. They are slug-like creatures that live inside protective exoskeletons. The men in black begin to investigate a sewer close to the beach, where a giant Skraldian attacked them. K wanted to use non-lethals on the creature, but J used his noisy cricket on the creature and blasted off its exoskeleton. The Skraldian spat some vomit on K before dying and marked his DNA for other Skraldians to recognize because the species shared a hive mind. It seemed that J was now a lost cause because four billion Skraldians wanted J dead. Back at the MIB headquarters, everyone had presumed that J would die. In fact, people and aliens were throwing him farewell parties. However, K wasn't going to let Jay die without putting up a good fight. Another Skraldian attacked Jay at the headquarters, but K finally managed to freeze the alien after inadvertently killing another Skraldian. Bob, what do we got? They then receive a distress signal from the Arkillian ambassador, and they leave to help him. On the way from the Arkillian ambassador, several Skraldians attack Jay, but he survives with the help of his partner. They also get attacked by Skraldian warriors who had come on a spaceship. K seems to sacrifice himself to save Jay, but with a little help of the Arkillian ambassador, who owed his life to K, the latter managed to fool the Skraldians and save Jay in the process. Finally, the menace was over. So it is, K. So it is. Number 2. The Alpha Syndrome Season 1, Episode 4 Agents J and K met with the Centillion at the MIB headquarters. When asked about his situation, he revealed that a mugger stole his heart. Yeah, my heart! You're in love with your mugger? Huh. No, he didn't fall in love, but someone literally stole the poor chap's heart. Now, you should know that Centillions possess two hearts, so that's how he was alive to tell his tale. The men in black reached the hotel where the Centillion was staying to begin their investigation. At the hotel, Jay meets an MIB agent who calls himself A. 
Meanwhile, K receives a package that had a virtual selective memory projector. It was a device that allowed people to relive parts of their lives through memories. J turned to K, who was using the virtual selective memory projector, but K appeared to be in a great deal of pain. K mentioned something about rejecting everything someone ever taught him, but J pulled out the projector from K's head. J tries to grill K for answers, but the latter doesn't pay heed to anything that J has to ask. Furthermore, Zed interrupts Jay and warns him against asking Kay about his past. Jay's curiosity forces him to do some digging of his own, and with the help of the Worms and L, he discovers that an ex-agent named Alpha leads back to Kay's early life at MIB. He's back. I'll deal with it. Kay, this is bigger than you. He's bigger than When Jay and L were accessing the file on Alpha, Zed and Kay caught them in the act and reprimanded them. However, during the conversation, J revealed the name of Agent A, and it was enough for K to realize that Agent A, or Alpha, wanted to be found. He convinces Zed to give him one chance to try and take out Alpha. Alpha was the first agent and head of Men in Black, but he was also responsible for its near destruction. J and K find Alpha, who had transformed into a beast with several heads protruding from his chest and back. He had integrated himself using a device that was now more powerful than ever. J engaged in a battle with Alpha, and J headed straight towards the heart, but it tried to escape getting caught by Jay. In the end, Alpha caught the Centillion heart and burned it heavily. They returned to the headquarters where L tried to revive the heart, while the Centillion was kept under protective custody. However, Alpha infiltrated the headquarters and abducted the Centillion so that he could have the Centillion's second heart. K, by now, had had enough of Alpha, and he decides to take down his former teacher all by himself. But Zed wouldn't let him go alone, because it was nothing less than a suicide mission. Using his quick thinking, K used quick clones to deceive J and Zed, and he left all by himself to meet Alpha at his hideout. L and J retrieve K's virtual selective memory projector, and use it to learn that Alpha was the one who taught K everything he knew. But later, Alpha himself turned greedy and obsessed with power after he got his hands on a fully charged cosmic integrator. But I'm offering immortality, K. I'll get you another heart. It won't hurt a bit. After discovering K's location, J and L rushed to rescue him and the Centillion, who was being held hostage by Alpha. In an extremely smart move, J used a quick clone of himself and blew up Alpha, presumably killing him. How about wings that work? Number 3, The Symbiote Syndrome, Season 1, Episode 7 An entire race of microscopic aliens called the Millicrons infect K. The civilization of these Millicrons don't realize that they have infected their host. They don't really mean to harm, but their presence creates flu-like symptoms. Any attempts to extract them forcefully or kill them through medicines or vitamin C will lead to a global level of genocide because the Millicrons are highly protective of their children. Kay was supposed to go on a solo mission to extract a symbiote named Troy, who had been separated from his mother. Troy was just a teenager who got separated from his mother because, well, he ran away. Nevertheless, since K had to be scrubbed off the mission because of his condition, J convinces Zed to assign the task to him. Zed agrees. However, as is normal with J, he didn't read the necessary information about symbiotes and went for the job somewhat unprepared. He had to meld with the symbiote because it wouldn't sustain without a host body. It's a symbiote. It has to share a host body. However, if Jay spends more than 20 hours with the symbiote melded with him, the symbiote Troy would permanently take over Jay. Jay's mission was simple. Meet, greet, and bring Troy back to the headquarters so that he could be reunited with his mother. After the melding, Troy and Jay left in a high-speed train, but they get attacked by an intergalactic bounty hunter named Buzzard. Give up the symbiote. <gasps> He was working for the mysterious boss who wanted to have Troy's powers. Troy could change his host's body to create several objects, weapons, and could even grow wings out of the host's body. Buzzard blew up the train and confronted Jay and Troy, who managed to evade it temporarily. Meanwhile, the news of the train wreckage reached the MIB headquarters. When Kay heard the news, he was determined to go out there and save his partner. 
but his condition was still unstable. L had fixed him up with a device for peaceful evacuation of the Millicrons, but they were more than 4 billion in number, and the process was definitely going to be time consuming. Nevertheless, Zed sends L with K so that she could keep track of his vitals. After much ado, K managed to find J, who was under the attack of the buzzard. However, K fell unconscious because of his illness. But fortunately for him, he revived just as the last of the Millicrons left his body and defeated Buzzard and his mysterious boss. The episode tells a fantastic tale about contemporary issues that teenagers and their parents face. Furthermore, it elaborated on the relationship between Jay and Kay. Kay risking his life trying to save his partner is indeed the kind of partnership that anyone would want. Number 4 the Psychic Link Syndrome, Season 1, Episode 9. A young tourist from Rockford, Illinois, visits the Big Apple, only to get attacked by an Alcidian named Forbis. The Alcidian drains the young tourist of his bodily fluids in order to get his essence. J, K, and L reach the hotel where the tourist was found, but fail to conclude why an alien would attack a human. It was a fairly rare act. Nevertheless, K managed to find an ID card of the attacker and deduced that the Alcidian was a cab driver. Soon, the Men in Black managed to find Forbis the Alcidian, and he transformed into the original form and bashed up K and grasped J with his Wolverine-like claws, after which point K fainted. Back at the headquarters, L revives K, who wakes up with a headache and explains that he had been just subjected to the Alcidian handshake. Alcidians are highly social beings who exchange some of their essence by biting each other's hands as an act of bonding to create an emotional link. Just as they were trying to figure out Forbus' intentions behind his attacks on humans, K felt an excruciatingly burning sensation in his hand. This was happening because the Alcidian was touching his car's hot engine. K concluded that whatever happened to the Alcidian would happen to him too. Hence, a psychic link was created. L offered to break the link, but K thought it was better to leave the connection because it might make him feel more than pain, and he might get to learn about the alien. Kay and the Alcidian had become somewhat like the Corsican brothers from Alexander Dumas' novella. So you're saying you and he are like the Corsican brothers? Except we're not brothers or Spanish. The brothers used to be Siamese twins who were separated at birth. However, they continued to feel each other's physical distress and sensations. Later, Jay and Kay met with other Alcidian cabbies at an Alcidian food joint, where they learned how antisocial Forbus was for an Alcidian. Later, a random photographer takes pictures of Forbus, who attacks the photographer, but the latter managed to escape. And of course, Gay felt the same rage that Forbus felt. The photographer later got attacked by Forbus, but the men in black reached the spot just in time to pursue Forbus. J and K finally catch up with the alien, but he managed to take advantage of the psychic link to elude them. Peaceably, get ready to duck. Huh? <gasps> Every time J hit the Alcidian, K also felt the pain. When a journalist tries to take K's pictures, he becomes enraged as if someone was trying to take his essence. K was now relating to the Alcidian personality, something that started to bother L. The men in black soon confronted the Alcidian on a building's rooftop, where K seemed to have lost his soul entirely to relate to the Alcidian. However, Jay used a camera flash as a weapon against the Alcidian and drained the alien and K of their essence. The Alcidian was later sent to the men in black psychiatric ward. <laughs> Number 5, The Dog-Eat-Dog -dog Syndrome, Season 2, Episode 4. Just after an elderly couple closed their diner, a UFO crash-landed on their diner and destroyed it. Men in Black reached the spot and Kay ordered to sweep the area, clean of any alien traces. But the diner was everything that the elderly couple had. After hearing this, Kay neuralized the couple but ordered his men to upgrade the diner into a fancy eatery. Upon inspecting the spaceship, they discover that it was a prison transport ship, but its pilot was a fugitive. Upon further investigation, J and K found their fugitive alien, who attacked them by firing beams of flame from his palms. The alien tried to make an escape, but J and K gave chase. Unfortunately, the flamethrowing alien managed to escape by jumping into a river. Back at the headquarters, Zed found out that the perp was a notorious criminal and prison breaker named Drek. The only lead that they have on Drek is an alien pug named Frank. 
Drek had once threatened Frank, and naturally, he was extremely scared of selling Drek out to the Men in Black. However, every alien dog has its price, and Frank's price was the XL2000 suit. Frank later goes to a pub where he bumps into Drek. As the two of them take a table and talk, they get interpreted by two aliens who later turn out to be J and K. The men in black apprehend Drek by freezing his hands together. Once he was caught, Frank revealed to Drek that he had been working with the men in black. This later turned out to be a bad move because not only did Drek threaten to boil him slowly in water, but he also escaped his custody. He then came to exact his revenge on Frank, but he instead cut out a deal with the pug. Drek now wanted Frank to work as his snitch and get J and K to an abandoned mill. Slick. Drek easily subdues the men in black and puts them in a vat of molten metal, but the men were wearing heat-resistant suits. They finally managed to freeze Drek entirely, and not just his hands. And, as was promised, Frank receives his XL2000 suit. <laughs> Number 6. The jack o lantern Syndrome Season 2, Episode 6 On Halloween night, a group of kids performs a seance to summon the jack-o'-lantern. It initially seems that their efforts have gone to waste, but soon a spaceship arrives with a strange big-headed alien. The alien appears before them, wearing a pumpkin-like head, and the kids flee the spot, assuming that they have just summoned the jack-o'-lantern. Halloween is loved by the alien community, as well as the alien criminals, because it gives them a fine opportunity to roam around free, without their disguises. Zed puts every agent on high alert, and assigns agents U and K for street patrol, while J is sent with the worms for trick-or-treating. K goes to meet Frank, the pug, who tells K that he got bitten by a werewolf. Interestingly, there's a Ghostbusters reference here in the scene as well. When K tells Frank that, <sighs> Don't know why you called me, Frank. Supernatural's outside MIB jurisdiction. Frank tells him, Who you gonna call? Well, Ghostbusters. Meanwhile, the jack-o'-lantern alien abducts a young kid, and Jay serves as the babysitter for the worms while they go trick-or-treating. Back at the headquarters, the power goes out, despite five backup generators. Troy theorizes that it must have been the work of the jack-o'-lantern, but Zed disregards the opinion, claiming that they were just a figment of Earth's imagination. On the other hand, Jay loses one of the worms to the jack-o'-lantern alien, and Kay visits his informer, who tells him that an alien ship had landed in a nearby neighborhood. When Kay and Yu visit the place, Kay discovers that it belonged to a criminal alien who abducts little people or aliens to sell them as slave laborers. Furthermore, Kay finds the previously abducted kid and the abducted worm. Meanwhile, Jay confronts the jack-o'-lantern, while it was assaulting another kid, but clearly, Jay was no match for the alien. K and U arrive at the spot. It turns out that big people couldn't take out the alien, but K had a unique plan in mind. He uses a field generator to simulate the environment in such a way that the alien would feel weaker and the worms would feel stronger. The worms took out the alien with combined efforts to save the day, well, night, and all children from slavery. At the end of the episode, Frank the Pug did in fact turn into a werewolf. Yes, they're really gonna need the Ghostbusters now, huh? Good work. Thanks. <laughs> Number seven, the Lost Continent Syndrome. Season 3, Episode 4 After catching an intergalactic alien criminal wanted in three galaxies, J and K take their aircraft in the middle of the sea and get into an underwater craft. He learns from Zed that Queen Toon, the leader of the Zangarian Liberation Army and a fantastic zealot, terrorist, was back on Earth. Queen Toon was a four-armed humanoid alien who would pledge to hustle and spread violence and terror until the Zangarian Empire rose to power. The place where the last activity was noted was named Area 117, but it was actually the ancient empire of Atlantis. It turns out that the Zangarians apparently established the Atlantean Empire and then abandoned it. Many years later, it has turned into an extraterrestrial tourist attraction. Interestingly, Kay had given Jay a nodule that helped him to change his physiology to develop gills and fins. And furthermore, it heightened Jay's subaqueous sensory perceptions. The men in black reached their destination, and upon investigation, they discovered an elaborate plan. A subaqueous robot attacks the men in black. Jay is left unconscious on the seabed while Kay gets abducted by Queen Toon and is kept as a prisoner along with other alien tourists. Queen Toon's plan was to bring the city of Atlantis back to the surface, but that would create massive disasters like extremely high tidal waves. 
However, K manages to bring back to his senses by scratching a sharp metal against the glass enclosure. Jay's heightened senses pick up the noise, and he wakes up later beginning to search for K using his smell. Jay infiltrated Queen Toon's facility and saved K from dying because of shortness of breath, after which he went after Queen Toon, who was getting away. Queen Toon had initiated the launch off, and the only way to stop the plan was to enter the access code, which only Queen Toon knew. However, K soon learned that Agent C, who was in charge of Area 117, didn't report the abduction of the alien tourists for several days. Naturally, he was in on the plan with Queen Toon, but when K confronts C, his conscience was moved. Becoming righteous, he crashed the underwater craft into the rising Atlantis and saved Earth from a massive catastrophe. However, a few nukes fell into the sea and exploded, creating a huge wave, but K managed to freeze the waves with an icer. Number 8. The Out of Pasture Syndrome Season 3, Episode 9 While fishing in the South Pole, a man gets attacked by Alpha, the first chief of Men in Black, now transformed into a creature made of body parts of four races. But his body had suffered frostbite and became brittle due to it. Alpha attacks the fisherman to take the latter's body parts. Back at the headquarters, Zed surprises everyone by announcing his retirement. He leaves K as the new chief of Men in Black, who throw him a farewell party. Later, K neuralizes Zed and tells him that he's supposed to spend the rest of his life fishing. After 35 successful years on Wall Street, all you want to do is fish and enjoy. As chief, K gets involved with the prison transport, arriving on Earth for refueling. It carries the most dangerous criminals of the galaxy and gets attacked by Alpha, who takes the body parts of the criminals. When K learns about this, he concludes that Alpha is back in business. Jay gets L as his new partner, and naturally, he's not very happy about it. During their conversation, he mentions a new coffee machine that the worms have received, but Kay hadn't ordered any. They discover that the coffee machine was actually an unbreachable bomb. The bomb detonates and destroys a great chunk of Men in Black headquarters. Jay and L then find Alpha in his hideout, where L leaves to call for backup. Alpha, however, overpowers Jay and extracts information from him using one of his newly acquired body parts. Alpha finds out about Zed's location and goes hunting him down. Alpha finds Zed, but he is surrounded by Men in Black agents. It turns out that the entire story of Zed's retirement was just an elaborate ploy to get Alpha out in the open. All the Men in Black personnel knew about it, with the exception of Jay, who was used as bait. Furthermore, the neuralizer that K had used on Zed was simply a flash. However, Alpha managed to subdue the agents surrounding him and went after Zed, but Jay and L were in hot pursuit. You see, Zed, I possess the combined intellect of four superior... After a tense sequence of events, where Alpha used all his appendages and brute force to attack Zed, Jay managed to destroy Alpha using one of his own tentacles. Alpha's alien body dissolved into thin air, leaving only Alpha's shriveled and battered body. Alpha was finally captured and sent to the mental ward, once and for all. Number 9. The I Want My Mummy Syndrome Season 3, Episode 11 One night, there was a convergence of three stars in the Canis Minor constellation. It was the alien equivalent of a special full moon event on Earth. That night, a 5,000-year-old mummy came to life, attacked a security guard, and left the museum. The mummy was actually a Hyperion from the planet of Hyperia, which resembled ancient Egypt. Before heading to the museum, J and K visit Frank the Pug, who was apparently well-read in the subject of ancient Egypt. The Hyperion that escaped from the museum was sent as an advanced scout to Earth thousands of years ago, but ended up being trapped before he could report back home. Okay, smile and say cheesecloth! The Men in Black find the Hyperion wrecking an ancient Egypt-themed restaurant. With Jay distracting the alien, K manages to subdue it with his gun. But Jeebs helps the violent alien and gives it a ride to Egypt. Zed asks Jay and K to visit the Cradle of Civilization and allows Frank the Pug to go along because of his knowledge of ancient Egypt. The Hyperion wished to use an interstellar gateway in one of the pyramids so that he could report back to his kind and come along with them to conquer Earth. But Frank and Jeebs managed to find the gateway and traveled thousands of light years in 10 seconds to reach Hyperia, where Frank was assumed the king. 
Ramatepte. Ramatep. And I didn't bring you any- J and K also found the gateway, where K revealed that the only way to stop the giant intergalactic mess was by destroying the gateway, but it had to be done from both ends. In Hyperia, Frank was being treated as the king, and he got Jeebs arrested, and naturally, Jeebs swore to exact his revenge. K and J reach Hyperia and get attacked by the royal guards. Meanwhile, Jeebs pulled out Frank's dog suit, revealing to the Hyperians that he was indeed an imposter. After seizing control of Hyperion's weapons, Gay and Jay fought the Hyperions, and all of them ran towards the portal. But the Hyperion general summoned giant insects, sandstorms, etc. They finally managed to reach the portal and destroy the Hyperion end of it. After reaching Earth, they destroy the Earth portal as well, sending back the last Hyperion who had managed to reach Earth. Today is that much sweeter. These airstrikes are wasteful. It is time for a new story. Number 10, The Endgame Syndrome, Parts 1 and 2, Season 4, Episodes 12 and 13. Alpha arranged for the evil alien Vangus to escape MIB custody, and they teamed up to conquer Earth. The deal was that the Ixions and the Vangus would take control of Earth's oil, which was a precious resource in the intergalactic commercial market, and Alpha would get to rule Earth. With the Ixions involved in the situation, Zed deduces that an invasion is imminent, and he seeks the help of other alien races that were allies of Earth. However, if the alien spaceships start landing in Times Square, the secrecy of Men in Black would have become a lost cause. Furthermore, the threat was now too big for the Men in Black to handle alone, so Zed decided to reveal the existence of Men in Black and aliens to the world, and more specifically, the President of the United States, so that the Men in Black could combine their forces with the armed forces as the aliens attack the UN building as well as the Washington Monument, but it seems like they had no intention of stopping anytime soon, or at least until Earth was entirely annihilated. A small batch of Ixion fighter jets arrive, and they are taken care of by L and Agent X with the help of the US Air Force pilots. Meanwhile, J and K head to the Men in Black space station to take care of the Ixion Armada. However, before they could do any significant damage, the space station was turned to dust. Alpha was becoming weary of the slow tactic of attack and retreat being used by Vangus, so he initiated an attack on the Men in Black headquarters because they were the ones coordinating the defense strategies. Alpha destroyed the headquarters with a targeted beam of energy. Can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs. Omelette, eggs. Good one. The world was now in chaos because of the revelation of extraterrestrial existence and their assault on Earth. J and K managed to save everyone from their headquarters, except for the Worms, who were in Washington, D.C., and had their own mission to save the Cappuccino building. Well, they just misheard the term capital. J and K head to space once again, while the Ixion Armada continued its invasion on Earth. Vangus managed to capture them. However, he starts to become impatient and decides to launch a missile that would completely ruin Earth. But Alpha objects to this because it would leave him without any people to rule. Naturally, Alpha and Vangus get into a confrontation in which Vangus blew off one of Alpha's arms. Jay used the arm to stun Vangus and knock Alpha out. Vangus recovered and launched the missile onto Earth with Alpha on it. The Men in Black managed to successfully blow up the missile, killing Alpha once more, hopefully for good. Later, K uses the Neuralizer at a press conference to wipe out the memories of everyone watching, and thereby he kept the secret about aliens and Men in Black intact. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For marvelous videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks for watching. Remember, folks, it's only a movie.